We turn now to 1 Peter and chapter 2 and verse 11. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, on account of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. In the earlier verses that we considered last week, Peter had mentioned how God's children are called a chosen race, verse 9, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, the people of God, those who had received mercy. And in an earlier verse, in verse 5, a spiritual house and a holy priesthood. Now, in view of all these, which describe, these titles which describe what God's people are to be, Peter says, I urge you, as aliens and strangers. All these titles indicate that we do not belong to this world anymore. We are a chosen race, separated from this world. Jesus said to his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion, you are not of this world, even as I am not of this world, he said. If you belong to this world, then the world would love you. But because you are not of this world, the world hates you. You are like a fish out of water. You're in a situation which is quite foreign to your nature. And this is why the one who really seeks to follow Jesus will find it quite difficult to live in this world. Life is not going to be easy because he is in a strange foreign atmosphere. He's in a foreign country. He doesn't belong to this world at all. And this is something that we need to recognize. We are foreigners and strangers. And so Peter says, since you are foreigners and strangers, don't live like all the other people live around you. All the other people who live around you live according to their lusts. They please their own lusts. They please all the appetites of their flesh and seek fulfillment in it through various worldly pleasures. And if you walk the same way, then you are not a follower of Jesus. Then you are not a chosen race or a special nation, a peculiar people for God's own possession. No. Then you behave like all the others. But he says, I urge you, as those who are completely different, those who belong to another country from this world altogether, to abstain from these fleshly lusts. Because these fleshly lusts wage war against our soul, and prevent our soul from being pure for God's dwelling. We must realize that every lust that there is in our flesh is constantly waging a war to corrupt and pollute our soul. And if we get on the side of those lusts and satisfy them through sinful pleasures, then our soul will become impure and cannot be God's dwelling place. And so he says, abstain from them, fight them, crucify them, Put them to death. Verse 12. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. We put the flesh to death within ourselves. We bring the cross of Christ to bear upon our flesh within ourselves. This is an inward activity described in verse 11. For the lusts of the flesh are mortified within. But then in verse 12. He speaks of our external conduct. Keep your behavior excellent among the heathen, among the non-Christians, among those who do not know God, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers. Now the heathen may slander you as evildoers for things which they cannot understand. But in the day of visitation, in the day when Jesus comes back in glory. They will have to glorify God because they see that what we did was good 
that our motives were good, that our attitude was good. And as they observe that, they will be compelled to glorify God. And so we see that our vindication does not come until the day of Christ's return. We must be willing until the day of Christ's return to be rejected by men as Jesus was rejected. Verse 4 of 1 Peter 2. To be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Verse 8. On which worldly people and worldly Christians stumble because they are disobedient to the word. And also to be slandered as evildoers. Jesus was slandered as an evildoer. They called him a corrupter of the doctrine. They called him a heretic and the prince of devils. And Jesus said, The servant is not above his master. The disciple is not above his Lord. If they have called the master the prince of devils, they will not call you any less. But by our good life, this is God's will, that by our good life, we put them to silence, as he goes on to say in verses 13 onwards. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority, or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. A true Christian is one who submits to civil authority, whether the authority in his office or factory, or the authority in the government. These are placed by God. God has appointed these people in authority, even though they may not know him. And our calling is to submit, not for their sake, but for the Lord's sake. When the factory workers call a strike, we are not to respond to it if we are followers of Jesus. We submit to the authority, not because we are on the side of the management, but because we are on the Lord's side. We are not on the side of the management or on the side of the trade unions. We are on the Lord's side. And here is where we stand out as distinct. Now the trade union workers may threaten us. They may slander us as evildoers. But if we desire to follow Jesus, we shall submit to authority and never show any rebellion. We do not complain for more wages. We do not complain about anything. If there is injustice, we can express to the management the injustice that is done, but never to rebel, never to be involved in violence. That is not our calling. We are a special people. And it says in verse 15 that God's will is that by our good lives we are to silence those who foolishly condemn the gospel without knowing what it can do, because they have never experienced its power. The world is full of ignorant people who do not know anything about the truth of the gospel. How do we put them to silence? Not by argument, not by speaking clever words, but by our good lives. By the fact that we do what is right, we put people to silence. By submitting to those who are in authority. So that even if others call us evildoers, we do not live in fear of them. We do God's will. We are free from sin. Verse 16, it says, Act as free men. Those who are free, free from the law, because the law has already been fulfilled within our hearts. But we do not use our freedom as a covering for evil. It's possible for us to use the New Testament truth that we are free as an excuse to do what we like. Those are the people who turn the grace of God into license to commit sin. But we are not to be in that number. We use our freedom to serve others and to serve God. We do not use our freedom as a covering for evil, but as bond servants of God. And the mark of our being a servant of God, one mark anyway, is this, that we submit for the Lord's sake to every human authority. Do you submit to the authority in civil circles, in the government, in your office, in your school, in your college, to the principal, to the teachers, as those appointed by God? That's our calling as a Christian. The world is full of a spirit of rebellion, and that rebellion originated with the devil. 
as we read in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. We are not to have anything of that spirit of rebellion in us, we who are God's chosen people. Let's submit then to human institutions and manifest by our character that we are different because we have God's own nature within ourselves.